Welcome into DRF Sportsbook's betting breakdown. This episode, we are going deep into bowl season, everything bowls that you can imagine. It's our bowl season primer, but with so many games on the docket, so many opportunities to make money, trying to figure out where the edge is, we welcome in Gino Bacola at It's Me, Gino B. Fantastic Twitter name, Gino. We've been working a lot together the last year or so. Yeah. How are you doing today? Doing great, man. Always nice to catch up with you. It's been too long. Uh, always have a fun time chatting sports with you. And wow, what a cool time because this is that part of the year that gets scary for some of us who cover sports with like our families because <laughs> there are football games on pro football games on Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, yep. and Monday this uh -huh. week. And then all of the bowl games start today and yep. they're basically games every day now moving forward for the next few weeks. Jimmy Kimmel, LA Bowl. You got to yeah. love it when Jimmy Kimmel, the face of LA, I, I guess, um, I <laughs> sponsors know. a bowl so, game that's so also funny. sponsored. Um, Washington State, Fresno State. I didn't know much about this game, but yeah, when I asked what games do you want to talk about, this was one of them you circled. Yep. And it, it, it presents you a lot of opportunities to make money on this one. But yep. coming into it, you haven't heard Washington State's name a lot. You haven't heard Fresno State's name a lot this season. No, and this number has moved quite a bit. It actually opened up at, like, Washington State as, like, a three-point favorite. And it's moved a lot, and it's not really one of those that's moved a lot because a bunch of guys aren't playing. I think the number just shifted quite a bit because Fresno State, has been very good down the stretch of this yeah. season. So what happened to them this year, their quarterback, Hayner, who is an absolute stud, he's one of those like awesome college quarterbacks that will run <laughs> through a brick wall for you. <laughs> and like everybody, he can like rally the troops. So he got hurt early in the year and they started one in four. And when he got hurt, he was supposed to be out from for 10 to 12 weeks. He came back in five weeks and since then, <laughs> they've been awesome. They've won eight straight games. They've gone six and two against the spread since he's returned. And they've won their games by an average of 18.9 points per game. They beat Boise State in the Mountain West Championship game as a three-point underdog. And this is actually a team who's played both USC and Oregon this year. So they've played Pac-12 competition and some of the best Pac-12 competition and on the Washington State side, you know, they got beat up by Washington in their final game. They are losing their defensive coordinator, who's going to Arizona State. So that could impact their defense for a Fresno State team that already can score. And what the way I'm looking at playing this game is the over. I think both teams are going to score on each other. Fresno, yeah. And now, knowing that Washington State's defensive coordinator is gone, the head coach has to control the defense. He's going to have a lot of balls in his court there. And then Fresno State they could become the first team ever in the history of college football to win 10 games after starting one and four because they kind of you very rarely get a chance to win 10 games <laughs> yeah. because they got the call it, they got the um they got the extra game in the conference championship yep. and now they're going to get the bowl game most of the time when you start one and four you're not in your conference championship and you're probably not going to make a bowl game so yeah. they could be the first ever 10 win team there i'm going to go over i think both teams can score and I missed the number. Like, if you like Fresno State, you could have got it at, like, plus money. And <laughs> yeah. now you're laying four. I don't know if I can get behind that much of a, of yeah. a switch value-wise, you know? it's Especially because when the lines switch like that, we saw it a lot with the, the Vikings-Lions game this last weekend where mm -hmm. everyone's like, Vegas thinks the Lions are better than the Vikings. But the line opened, Vikings that, favored. Yeah. Or, like, very close. So it and wasn't it, necessarily yeah. vague. And, and in this case... People might be looking, whoa, Fresno State, the Washington State, this Pac-12 team's getting disrespected. Kind of, but Vegas also thought Washington State yeah. was good or yep. better than Fresno. It's just now all the money has poured in on Fresno. And I, I normally like picking against the public, Joe Public. I, I don't necessarily like riding with them. But 85% of the public's on Fresno. And I think Fresno at minus four is still the play. I, I, I agree. I wouldn't. Because my line initially would have been yeah. closer to this, in yes. my, where I would have said it. Yeah. So I'm not on the Washington State side. And but anyway, you just like, are bummed that you missed out and on I Fresno. And I missed all that plus. number, yeah. and I'm hoping that maybe the better way to capitalize on it is to play the over. Because yeah. I still think Fresno State can score. And I, yeah. Fresno State's defense isn't very good. Neither and, one of these defenses are good. They're both no. 
above, slightly above average offensively and average to slightly below average defensively. So the over at 52 and a half is a fantastic play. And then we always think about a little like motivation too. Like a team like Fresno State is really excited to play in a spot like this and like yeah. beating a Pac-12 team, even a Washington, that's a big deal for them. Yeah. And I think we're going to have a conversation about a game right afterwards where I sort of feel the same way about a Pac-12 team yep. beating an SEC team that might be a little bit down, you know, yes. and, and I think that's where we're headed next, right? What a beautiful segue. It's it's awesome when, when I'm hosting <laughs> one of these and uh, the guest is able to segue better than I am. Las Vegas Bowl, SEC team, Pac-12 team, but Florida, just so we can set the stage, folks, Florida without Anthony Richardson, yep. their stud quarterback who's going to be a first-round draft pick, he might be anywhere, depending on how the combine goes, Anthony Richardson could be, I could see, be the first quarterback taken if some team magically falls in love with him, a la Baker Mayfield a few years ago. He could be, he's most likely going to be the third or fourth quarterback taken, but yep. a top 15 pick regardless. I know. And he can't he's pass the and he can't pass. You know what I mean? Like he's he he's an athlete. He's just he's an athlete. Star athlete, but he's out of this game. Uh, you've got the wide receiver shorter out. Their guard Torrance out. Their <laughs> linebacker Miller, who was third on the team with tackles, he's going to transfer, so he won't be playing. The safety could also miss the game. He was hurt in their final game of the year with injury, and that's what's so hard to look at the Florida team and look at any metrics for what they've done this year because. Their quarterback's not playing. Their wide receiver's not yeah. playing. Their guard's not playing. Two of their best defensive players aren't playing. They still have talented players on their team, but their quarterback is going to be a former very highly recruited player, Jack Miller, who was at, at Ohio State, and he transferred. He never started a game. He, he got in, and I think he's taken like 15 – I think he's thrown the ball like 15 yeah. times in garbage time. So this will be a, a start for him. And Florida is like – they're 6-6 six and six this year – they probably feel a little bit disappointing about how yeah. their year has gone. And Oregon State couldn't be more opposite. Yeah. <laughs> they they feel awesome about their year. They are, you know, nine and three overall. Yep. They just beat their rival, Oregon, in a really like awesome come from behind win. They went six and one against the spread in their final seven games of the year, and they won four, they won all four of their last games to end on a really nice positive yeah. note. This is a new coach. They have like a bunch of new younger players. So this is like a really big stepping stone year for them. Heck, they should have beat USC this year. Yeah. They had USC beat in that game up at Oregon State and USC got lot, like the, the balls bounced their way a few <laughs> times. They were getting the Vikings syndrome that, yeah. that day for yep. the Trojans. And this Oregon State team, like beating Florida, even a down Florida team would be huge for them recruiting moving forward yeah. to the next year. Beating any SEC team, especially like when you're in the spot that Oregon State is in, beating any SEC school, in no matter what part of the schedule it is, or no matter how the other team comes in, yeah, you just point to that. You point to that in two years when you're recruiting a three or a four star kid, you're trying to beat out Oregon for, or you're trying to beat out Washington or Washington mm -hmm. State, and you're just like, well, well, look at what we did. And yeah, this is massive for Oregon State. They're the second most profitable team in the country as well. 10 and two against the spread yep. overall. I mean, I think this might be a blowout. Me too. And I, I think like, I, like, and I would be looking to play some things if you could find like, I don't know how Florida scores in this game, honestly. Like yeah. maybe like team total unders for Florida. Like, and, and I would, even if you can get some sort of like adjusted line, like you're saying, I think for I think Oregon State might win this game by 21. I really do. They're they're going to be so pumped for yeah. this spot and it's like it's a they don't have to travel far either. It's in Vegas, so it's it's like close for them. They'll probably have a like a nice contingent of fans that yep. go over there to have fun and are excited to root for their team that's in a good spot for them this year. Like and what's great is like you for USC for example, like compare the spots yeah. I would rather play in this game. I'm not even joking because like for USC playing against who like Tulane now, they're going to be in like a no win situation yes. where like everybody expects them to win. Yes. USC doesn't really have any motivation for that game. They thought they were going to be playing for a national championship and they spit it out. Like I <laughs> like at least here you're playing a big name yeah. school like Florida where if you beat them like it still can hold a little something for yeah. you. I mean, the Oregon State defense, they've only allowed 11 touchdowns passing this year. They have 12 interceptions. They're good. Like, 
they're 27th in the nation in rushing. Um, their freshman running back Martinez, he's hit 100 yards in six straight games. I think they get up, yep. and then they just run the ball. Yeah, and it's going to be really tough for Florida to move the ball with an offense that's a, just we we have no idea what to expect from them. Yeah, and this is an Oregon State offense too. Not only can they run it extremely efficiently, they pass it really well. Yep. 8.1 yards per attempt, which is just like a mind-numbing number. They this, average 6.2 yards per play. Like this is a really good. Oregon State team that should be able to take advantage of a down year in Florida. Yeah, the the quarterback they made a change when yep. uh, their quarterback got hurt about halfway through the year, and then Goldbrunson came in, and they've won six of the seven games that he played. Yep. He didn't really play very well against Oregon, which was funny because they won that game, <laughs> but he had played well in all the games leading yeah. up. And yeah, I I like this team a lot, and this was a team that, like you said, they're really good against the spread. And I played them early in the year quite a bit in spots mm -hmm. when you, you could just kind of sense they were well coached. Yes. And they're a hard place to play at, at Oregon State. Yeah. So anytime teams go there, they're always a fun home dog whenever they're in that situation. So, yeah, I thought this was a good game. And I think Oregon State, anything adjusted on them, I just – I'm not expecting a great performance from Florida in here at all. And, and like, maybe low, low on their team totals and uh, – yeah <laughs> – let, let's dive into the Beavers. It could be a really a good offseason for them. Win here, build a ton of momentum moving into next year. For sure. It's it's really interesting to me, too. You look here, the lines on the – or not the lines, but where the public is on this game, 52% of the public right now on Florida, which is very interesting. I, I don't see what the – pub. and this is what we were talking about in the last game. We normally like to fade the public. I think this yep. is why. The yeah. public is all over Florida – yet the line is moving in favor of Oregon State. That tells you right there, the sharp money, the actual like bettors who make their money betting games, all over Oregon State. This isn't the Tim Tebow, up. Florida yeah. team. Nope. This isn't even Richardson, Florida team that they were <laughs> earlier this year. This is this is a Billy Napier trying to get a kid from his you know philosophy 101 class to block for whoever the quarterback is yeah. In, yeah. In, in, in the third quarter. So it's going to be... A fun game if you're an Oregon State fan. I think Florida fans might not even watch this game, honestly. Florida, I don't think the Las Vegas Bowl is up to Florida fan standards.